12, I guess we can get on the go. <laughs> it's good for everybody. I didn't know how many people be here tonight, but you know what? I got to thinking when I, about uh, numbers, and I thought, well, just two or three are gathered together. In the, the Lord said he would be in the midst. And if it, even if it wasn't two or three to gather together, and it was just me by myself, and I walked into the sanctuary because I'd done it before and kneeled at the altar, God would be there. So I'm just thankful for that tonight. Praise the Lord. We're going to have prayer this morning. Cindy, if you want to have open prayer for us. Cindy, if you'll come, and I think Mary Lou's going to lead the singing for us. Let's start with the chorus all day long, I've been with Jesus. Well, I'll have to sing for two. <laughs> All day long I've been with Jesus. It has been a wonder. Jesus, all 
She's at her son's house. So they're back up here. She was at the beach, right? Living at the beach. She's, she's, oh, he's in South Carolina too. Okay. Oh, mm. Remember our children as they're going back to school. Uh, as of right now, Brother Cole feels like that we're going to put them all in one class, the little ones along with all the ages there. So the Lord may the Lord help Carlene and Brother Cole as they try to deal with everybody in one class like that. I know Sister Carlene will have to take the children out, the little ones out periodically for different occasions, for different situations, but... Um, we want the Lord to help them back there, especially with the little ones back there. Michael and Nathan, Tyler. yeah. My, uh, Tyler and Luther's already up there. They got there about 530 or so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Lord has brought Ty a long ways. Me and Mama was talking about him the other day, how far God has brought Ty, where he was when he first came to church here with Brother and Sister Thomas and how the Lord just, just and now he's a Marine. It's just hard to believe, isn't it? It's really hard to believe but how God can just help and people. But yeah, he needs prayer. Anybody else? Okay, um, Brother Perry, if you, we, we can, let's kneel tonight. Brother Perry, you uh, lead us in prayer tonight.
As I was kneeling at home uh, Tuesday morning, my knees hit the floor, and right there in my thoughts, that song come to me, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning, burning. So tonight, we're going to talk about oil, and um, if you have your Bibles, you can look at Hebrews 1.9, um, probably a familiar verse talk about oil tonight. Just a few thoughts and lesson, a little of importance of oil. Hebrews 1 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Oh, yeah, I was looking, just looking up oil in general, some definitions about it, and um, some of the uses of it. Um, an oil is a nonpolar chemical substance that is. It's sort of like a slow-moving, vicarious liquid, and it's, um, it is both hydrophobic, which it does not mix with water, and it is um, lipophobic, which is, um, literally means it likes to mix with other oils. And I know that y'all have probably heard of oil spills in the Atlantic and the Pacific and everything, and if you're up in a helicopter and you look down, you can notice that that oil is sort of just staying right together. It's not dissolving out into the ocean. And most of the time, they've got to um, bring another ship in and sort of suck that oil off of the top of the ocean to try to get it out, to try it, because it could be damaging to the, to the fish and any uh, life that's in the ocean around that area. Um, petro uh, petroleum products include transportation fuel, fuel oil for heating electricity, asphalt, road oil, feedstocks for making chemicals, plastics, synthetic materials that are in nearly everything that we use. There's oil probably somewhere in the midst of the making of that item. Oil is the lifeblood of the industrialized nations. 
Oil has become the world's most important source of energy since the mid 1950s. And when I brought that up on my phone, I thought, seems like we had, we was using oil before then, but I guess maybe that was when we really started using it for different things other than maybe gasoline for the cars, I'm not sure, but that's what it come up. Its products underpin modern society, mainly supplying energy to power industry, heating homes, providing fuel for vehicles, and aeroplanes to carry goods and people all over the world. Oil is a very important item, uh, substance, item. In our skin, we have oil in our skin. The fact is everybody's got oil in their skin unless you have some major, you were born with some major problem. Each of your pores is a, is a sepac, sep, sebac, I can't pronounce the word, some type of gland that produces natural oils called sebin. This helps keep your skin hydrated and healthy. Of course, teenagers, you know what happens to teenagers. They don't like it, but they get extra and it causes problems, and then when we get older, we get a little less, and that causes, causes a little problems. So oil in our skin is a very important thing. Es essential oils are also referred to in the Bible as fragrances, odors, ointments, aromas, perfumes, or sweet savor. It's re you'll find that in the Bible. Olive oil, most important, it was the most important oil to the Israelites. It was used as an emol emollient, which is like a moisturizer. Um, it was used for that, or it was also used for lighting their lamps, for fuel, and for nutrition, and for many other purposes. It was, it was the scented oil, olive oil that was chosen to be the holy anointing oil for the Israelites. So oil is... Very, very important, not only in our world today and just natural, uh, in the natural sense, in making of things, using it for different things, but it's very important. God's Word has many things to say about oil. In Psalms 47, 45, 7, which is similar to Hebrews 1, 9, it says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest iniquity. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And so so many other scriptures in the Bible, we, we can find more and more places about oil. Jesus warns over in Matthew 25 about the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. The five foolish didn't have oil in their lamps where the five wise did. Oil, as I was thinking about that, I was kneeling there at my bed. Up on my sign, uh, up on the wall there, I have the saying, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. And um, I forgot about the top line, and I says, give me more oil, Jesus. I sort of filled that in there. And we've got to have the oil of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. Love we cannot win the world by force or a driving spirit. Tonight, if we don't get anything out of this lesson, and I think the Lord, um, he just, that, that how important the oil is. And what, as, as we think about the oil, it talks about, um, like in the natural sense, when the oil, where I was telling you about a while ago, how that it's out there in the ocean when you have an oil spill and how it doesn't mix, how it, the oil doesn't mix with the water. It stays there and it just floats along until somebody can try to suction it out of the ocean. And you know, you and I, the world, the Lord does not, if we have the oil down in our hearts, we're not going to be mixing with the unstable waters of our world today. And we live in, in a world that's just unstable. And if we, when the oil is inside of us, it's a natural thing, just like that oil floating across that ocean. It is a natural thing. And don't ever let the devil beat you on the back of the head or tell you anything different. It is a natural thing that when you have the oil of the Holy Ghost living inside of you, if you're not blending in, if you're not 
being dissolved into the things of this old world, of the unstable parts of this world, you're just as normal as normal can be. You're just exactly where God wants you to be. Because just like the scripture was talking about in Hebrews 1, 9, it says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. You can turn that around and say, if you love iniquity and you hate righteousness, God will not anoint you with all about, with the oil of gladness. I think about the, um, when it talks about uh, over in Psalms 23 in the latter part of that, it says, surely goodness and mercy. And it's talking about Jesus. It's talking about the, the Holy Ghost and God. Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. And we can put Jesus' name there and we say, surely Jesus is going to follow us all the days of our life if we'll just keep our hands in him and he's living in our hearts. And here again, he's not going to anoint us. And if we are loving the wicked parts of this old world and turning from the righteous parts of this world, God is not going to anoint us with that oil in our hearts. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking about, I'm sure probably everybody in here has got streams in the desert and everybody could raise their hand. I remember when I first got saved, Sister Callan uh, gave me streams in the desert. And I read that thing, of course, I, you know, along with my Bible, day in and day out and day in and day out. And I got so that thing was literally falling apart. So I had to go to Faith Book Nook and get me another streams in the desert where I just I just have so enjoyed it but anyway on December the 8th this is a, a little um, uh, story that the lady the writer that put in there this time and it says as God's chosen people clothe yourself with kindness there was an old story of an elderly man who always carried around a can of oil with him everywhere he went when he would go through a door that squeaked, he would squirt a little oil on the hinges. If he encountered a gate that was hard to open, he would oil the latch. And so he went through life lubricating all the difficult places, make it easier for those who come after him. People called the man strange and crazy, but he went on steadily on, refilling his can of oil whenever it was nearly empty and oiling all the difficult places he found. Do we carry our can of oil, oil of helpfulness, oil of cheerfulness, oil of kindness? Has woven, has, the oil of kindness has worn the sharp edge off of many sin-hearted life and left it soft and pliable, ready to receive the redeeming grace of the Savior. A pleasant word is a bright ray of sunshine on a saddened heart. Therefore, give others the sunshine and tell Jesus the rest. I thought that was so good when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about tonight. Um, oil is a lubricating, also a lubricating um, chemical. Um, I'm sure there's about any type of lotion a, a lady could pick up or a man could pick up, it's got some type of oil in it. It's got some type of oil. And I know working there at the nursing home, we have to wash our hands. I like to have probably a dollar for every time I wash my hands or sanitize my hands. But my hands get so dry and cracked, where especially in the wintertime, they'll just bleed sometimes, the little around the edges, and I can put a little lotion on there that's got a lot of good oil in it, and that just, by morning, I can tell a difference in my hands. So lubrication, that we, we, will, ha we will have that when the oil is inside of us and the Holy Ghost is ruling and reigning in there, and we're dealing with a world out there, whether it's our children or teenagers or family members or whatever, when we have a lubricating spirit, it sends healing. If, if Jesus, if that's all he ever did was, if it's all he ever did was drive you 
force you, push you, and have that type of spirit, would you ever fall in love with him? No. And Jesus, when that, when that oil of the spirit is down inside of us, it sends healing. It sends mending. It sends encouragement that people are dying for. And it's also a light that this lamp right here, it's just a little small light. But if we cut these lights out, you and I probably could just about get around this room with that one little light right there. And you know, we can't be a burning light if we don't got the oil. We won't burn. We will not burn like Jesus wants us to if we don't have the oil down in our hearts. May the Lord help us to have the oil. You know, I think about the scripture where it talked about there's been uh, ever since, I mean, I've been serving the Lord now for over 30 some years. And I have heard the scriptures on the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins over and over and over again. And it does something to you, especially when Jesus, when they get up there and Jesus says, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. You don't have, you know, they didn't go back. They didn't have the oil. They let their lamps go out. And I can't tell you the times that 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 scripture has always stayed in my mind. And when I go to the store or if I think I'm, I'm, I'm out of oil at home, now I know it's just cooking oil. But it's just the principle of the matter. I always want to keep oil. There's just something about that scripture that I always want to keep even cooking oil in my house and lantern oil in my house. It's just, it's just there. It's a, it's a, it's a fear. It is an, it's an encouragement to me that I always want to keep oil in my home, whether it's cooking oil, oil for my lamps or whatever. I want to keep oil in my home. And you know, the Lord, that is you and I, you and I will never get by with, without oil. When we're dealing with people, we're dealing with our family, um, whatever walk of life we're in, if we don't have the oil. You know, Barbara was telling me as I was sitting back there when I come in, after a while after I come in, she made mention of about a clerk. I think it was in a in a store or something and we have to wear a mask of course in our stores and how the clerk basically can only just see her eyes but she told Barbara she looked like Sister Teresa <laughs> but you know now the Lord like I told Barbara she's probably Catholic she's probably Catholic but to her Sister Teresa was on up there okay she was on up there to this Catholic individual probably no doubt a catholic so that actually that was a compliment to barbara you know that was that lady saw something in barbara's eyes that reminded her of that sister teresa that's way up there and you know why because of the oil that's down in here it comes out here and it comes out in so many ways so i know you know me tonight i'm always short i always try to get to the point that's just the lord helps us but may the Lord help us all to have oil. And, and I just say, Lord, give us more. Just give us more. Because sometimes rubbing shoulders and working and just in my own home with my children, raising two children at 60 years old, you know, sometimes I just want to, I'm just tired. I just want to sit on the couch. But they have needs. They have needs. And they need a mama that's got a lot of extra oil in her heart. They do. They need that. So y'all pray for me. And we're going to sing that song. If everybody wants to stand, we're going to sing that song. Give me oil in my lamp. Let's see. I guess we can do it. Unless Cindy wants to come, we can do it without music. Y'all help me out, okay? I'm not much of a singer. Give me.